Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're taking a look at the best new knives that were unveiled at SHOT Show 2023. Let's get into it. So Thomas and I are back, uh, and Seth is back too, actually. We all made it back from Las Vegas. Uh, had a great time covering the SHOT Show. Uh, we're still a little tired. As you can see, my voice is, uh, as you can hear, my voice is a little tired too, uh, which is why I have my coffee here. And in fact, my shirts are at home at the laundry. So today, this is what we're doing. There we go. <laughs> now we're representing. Uh, Thomas, did you have fun at the SHOT Show? I don't remember. It's a lot. There's, there's a lot going on at SHOT Show. We're running around nonstop. So people stopped us and asked us during the show, like, what's the best thing you've seen so far? It's an impossible question to answer in the moment because there's too much. There's, it's drinking water from a fire hose. So it's not until we get back, we start going over our notes, watching my own videos that we put, that Thomas put together. Um, actually our, anyway, doesn't matter. But watching our, uh, our Knife Center videos to remind myself, okay, what were we seeing? Like certain things stood out, yeah, but it's time for review. So we're gonna actually go through together all of the companies we visited this year, alphabetically, uh, just for organizational sake. And uh, I can tell you kind of what the, the standouts were from each of them. So we're gonna start with Acta Nonverba. And to me, their MO6 uh, was a really cool little piece. Uh, even though I'm not a, a like a knife fighter or anything like that, uh, it just seemed like a really clever take on the push dagger. Uh, it has a little Warncliffe style blade and it's got this hexagonal hole your main finger uh, slides through so that there's actually two posts going through. And it's essentially uh, designed to solve a problem that other, punch da other push daggers can have, which is a single point and that the blade can rotate upon impact. Um, harder to slip when you've got the two posts instead. It just seemed really cool. It was put together really well, just like everything AMV does. Uh, plus it's also for me, you know, speaking from my experience, as not a, uh, a tactical combatant or an operator or anything like that, I'm never gonna pretend to be, it's more utilitarian than a lot of push daggers too. So if I wanted to carry something like that as a means of defense, it's intuitive because it just points straight uh, with your fist but it's also got an Elmac steel Warncliffe style blade, like a little X-Acto knife or box cutter. Great for all kinds of stuff. Really cool little thing. All right, Artisan Cutlery. Uh, the big news out of them this year, uh, I think the headline is the Mike Snowdy designed accelerator. Been a while since we've seen a, a new Mike Snowdy production uh, collaboration hit the market. And it's kind of been a while since we've seen Artisan do a knife uh, as big as this Snowdy was. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger and chunkier, but it's still folded up quite nicely. It's going to be able to be carried without you know too much extra effort. Uh, it's not going to crowd out your pockets too badly uh, for for most folks, I think. And they're going to try to keep the price uh, a little bit more a little bit more down than it could have if they've gone with more exotic stuff. They're looking at probably S thirty five VN and Micarta handles for the uh, the standard release. So. Could have been a lot more expensive if they go with like M390 and titanium. So I don't have the final price yet either, but that's gonna be pretty cool. All right, now we're in the Bs, Benchmade. The uh, the small, uh, the Narrows knife was certainly big news. Uh, really thin, new, uh, type, new spring construction on their axis lock. Um, and it's pretty expensive, but based on the pre-orders uh, already, it's already a pretty big hit, uh, which kind of uh, surprised me, pleasantly so. Uh, they've also got the Magna Cut, uh, or <laughs> the Magna Cut, a couple Magna Cut knives, the, uh, one of the tagged outs with a carbon fiber handle, so nicer feel than the Grivery, and uh, the CLA Autos, there's gonna be two of those. Uh, one of them is a uh, limited release, however. But I actually am gonna say my favorite Benchmade uh, from this year was the new version of the Mini Barrage with a blue rich light handle. And that's just a really cool material. We're seeing it a little bit more. You're gonna see it a little more here. Um, it feels great. It feels almost wood-like. It looks good with the blue color. Uh, they finally uh, ditched the 154CM on the, uh, the old models and get S30V now. So it's 
Not, uh, not gonna set the world on fire, but it's an appropriate change right there. It's a really cool knife, three inch blade, really solid feel in the hand, and I really like this version. Uh, the one only knife we didn't see, I wish I did, was the new Mini Adamas that's in their catalog. They didn't have a sample there, uh, but it looked really good. I should, uh, before we go any further, let me talk about MagnaCut real quick. Um, for those of you that uh, don't follow the, uh, the ins and outs every day of uh, knife steel and the knife industry, uh, MagnaCut is basically a steel that's still kind of setting the world on its head uh, because there's three tiers of knife performance that as knife nerds we tend to care about. Oversimplifying things, certainly, but you can kind of think of a knife as having toughness, edge retention, which are two different things, and corrosion resistance are kind of the three pillars that most knife steels are built around. And typically, when you push one or two of those properties forward, the third one kind of suffers a little bit. Uh, but MagnaCut is kind of the first steel this is, uh, developed by Laren Thomas and Crucible Industries, so any of those CPM steels, that's Crucible, that has really high marks in all three. Uh, so stainless, in fact, that Spyderco's uh, starting to use in some of their salt series knives, which are billed as being you know, as near as rust proof as is humanly possible. And you've got really high edge retention and really high toughness too. Really cool stuff. Um, people want it. We're going to see some more stuff in MagnaCut, so I don't have to mention what it is every time. Here's a primer if you're, if you're unfamiliar with this stuff. Next up, we've got Best Tech, and to me, uh, the Mothis, Mothis by Kombu. Um, is the one this year for sure. Uh, it's got a crossbar lock, really intricate milled titanium handles, it's got a ambidextrous thumb disc and it's kept you know, back out of the way of the, uh, the cutting path, which is sometimes tricky to do. All of it, action, fit and finish is all great and all of that would have been enough on its own, but there's one really cool detail about it that was especially nice. It's a reversible pocket clip. It is a milled pocket clip and it's in set. So typically the quote unquote problem you run into making a clip like that ambidextrous is on the other side. You've got this hole with screw holes in it and some people don't like the look of that or you put a block out plate in there to kind of cover things up. What they've done instead, they've left the hole in set, no block out plate, but there's two little screws in there, but there's actually a milled design inside the pocket so that it looks like kind of a, a designed element of the knife rather than just a void. Really cool, almost looks like a tiny little skull. And that's just the cherry on top of a great knife, no matter how you slice it. All right, now we come to Boker. Uh, a couple of really cool things. The biggest headline was probably the, uh, the Z28 knife. Uh, that uses steel from a, a wrecked 1969, is it 69, is it? Yeah, uh, Camaro Z28. They didn't, you know, take a car off the road to make the uh, Damascus steel for these blades. It was something that was, uh, you know, beyond, beyond salvage, essentially. Uh, at least they assure me that was the case. Really cool. Uh, the handle is anodized aluminum, uh, color matched as closely as possible to one of their, uh, I think it was a Le Mans blue. Do you remember, Thomas? I don't know the GM colors. From the <laughs> Yeah, that's right, I forgot. Um, really cool. Uh, not my favorite thing they showed, however. Um, the Urban Barlows were also really cool, new Brad Zinker design. Um, we actually have a Knife Center exclusive already available uh, with K390 and uh, Burnt Orange Micarta, but the uh, M390 standard version I think is actually available um, by the time this video posts, will be available on our website too. But I think the, uh, the, cool, the, the coolest one to me was the new Zolingen made Trapper, TRPPR. Um, really sleek profile, reminds me, similar. the same part of me that likes a lot of those Zinker designs really likes this uh, this Trapper as well. It's made all in, 100% uh, in Germany, 100% in Zollingen too, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, and it's got a Magna Cut blade. Really cool looking knife, kind of Barlow-esque uh, a bit, but definitely very Trapper-esque. Flips really well. It's not going to be cheap, you know, with Magna Cut and made, made in Zollingen, uh, but really cool nonetheless. Buck Knives uh, relaunched a couple of, uh, of older series that had been discontinued, actually. The Packlight and the Alpha series, the Alpha Hunter. And that's, uh, that's my pick for the biggest news from Buck this year. Uh, two sizes. You've got a larger drop point blade and a smaller... Uh, well, they're both drop point blades, but you've got, you've got a bigger knife and a smaller knife. Uh, two tiers, as they uh, so often do. 
Uh, you've got a version that has 420 HC steel. And of course, Buck is known for getting the most amount of performance possible out of that steel compared to other companies. They, uh, they're considered to have the best heat treat for it and they just do, it kind of outperforms its roots, so to speak. Um, that blade steel is gonna be paired with a stabilized wood handle. I'm not sure if it's diamond wood or pack of wood specifically, but it's a similar type of thing, wood laminated layers. And then the pro versions, what they usually call it, I can't remember whether they're calling that, that this year or not, but the upper, uh, upper tier version, S35VN steel and rich light handles. Talked about Rich Light when I when we were talking about Benchmade. It's cool stuff. It's essentially a paper micarta. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty much the same. So it's layers of paper or wood fiber compressed with resin. And it's a really cool thing. It feels almost like wood, but of course it's very stable. You're not gonna get warpage and crackage like you would with a typical wood product. Really cool, loved both of those knives. All right, uh, Beyond EDC is the next one. Uh, and the big news there, I think, is they're coming out with a, uh, a standard regular catalog version of the John Demko designed River Wolf. Very cool knife. Uh, the versions that have been out so far have been very popular uh, and have all sold out, but they've not been considered continual items. Those have been kind of limited editions is how they launched the knife. Uh, the new version is gonna have Micarta handles. Uh, they say it's a burlap, but it's like a really fine weave burlap. It feels almost more, honestly more like a canvas and looks more like a canvas micarta than burlap to me. Uh, and it's going to be paired with an S35 VN blade. And just like his brother, Andrew Demko, John, who helps Andrew run uh, the Demko Knives company, actually, he knows exactly what's needed and desired for, you know, a, a big, hard use folding knife. And that's what you're going to get with this. Uh, and the price is pretty decent too. Uh, they're shooting for about $175 is what they told us. Uh, so we'll see what it actually winds up being, but if that's where it hit, but if that's where it sits, it's gonna be a pretty good deal, I think. Uh, good value anyway, maybe not a good deal, but pretty good value. All right, uh, Case Knives had some cool stuff. Uh, they had a new knife in their modern lineup. It comes with a liner lock and an assisted open, the West line. I thought that was a, a pretty nice shape, uh, but for me, the, uh, the vault pattern knife is what I'm really excited about this year. Uh, it's a small Congress, their si number 68 pattern, and they're gonna both do both two and four blade models. Sweet little size, felt really good. Uh, and there are 21 standard color options in their catalog right now, and to, uh, to say nothing of other versions they may or may not come out with. I don't know anything specifically, I'm just conjecturing there. Uh, but especially including the green apple bone that we showed in our case video that literally stopped me in my tracks. Uh, we were walking around the booth, grabbing things to shoot for the video with Maury, our rep there, who great guy, by the way, always, always a gracious host. And he's going here and he's walking off and I had to pull him back. He was like, no, no, tell me about this. What's, what's this thing? Really, really cool green color. There's actually a few green things that I really liked this year, but really cool. Green apple. Uh, it's, I was resisting the urge to like pop it in my mouth like a Jolly Rancher. It just looked delicious. <laughs> really cool stuff. Uh, next we come to Civivi. Um, I had a hard time picking with this one. There's two I really like. Uh, new Ray Laconico design, the Sokoke. Um, has a really sweet handle. Feels really good. There's a bit of contouring and it's designed in conjunction with the blade such that there's nothing in the way between your hand and the blade. Now I appreciate typically a bit of like finger guard protection that you might see from a flipper tab or the, the handle design. Apart from that, it'll keep you from sliding forward, but there is something to be said about a neutral knife that allows you to get your hand right up behind the edge. And this one has it. It's also got a really cool drop point uh, shape to it. And I believe uh, it's 14 C 28 N and the handles are linen micarta. It feels really good. I also really liked the, uh, the fixed blade various by Alan Elishowitz. Really cool little thing. It's essentially a modular knife blade or blade and handle combination that you can pop various ends onto that blade, whether it's with a ring or without is essentially the two options right now. It's made of G10, a couple of different blade shapes. There's a trainer, there's a dagger profile and a more kind of utilitarian drop point. And here's another thing where obviously there, there's clearly some intent there for it to be used uh, offensively or defensively, but 
me, you know, coming from my knowledge base, I look at it and go, man, that would be a great slim EDC that yes, you could use in those situations, those other situations too. Ultralight hikers, I think might also find it really cool. It's just a nice, like something about it really struck a chord with me. Uh, I don't think they've finalized the steel uh, or which kind of which configurations and variants are going to be released and how they're going to be packaged together, but I'm looking forward to seeing those when they come out. All right, uh, CJRB, obviously the uh, budget subsidiary of Wee Knife Company, or sorry, of Artisan Cutlery, apologies all around. Uh, they had a Laconico knife that I was really a big fan of as well. Uh, and that's the Echo with two Ks instead of uh, CHs or CCs like the Dolphin, but anyway. Um, the lines on the, the profile of that handle are just so good. Sometimes, you know, you can, anyone can sketch out a knife really, but it's those master designers like Ray Laconico, Vaknez, guys like those, Ken Onion, who when they put some, put pen to paper, just the way they kind of orchestrate their lines around a design, they understand visual tension, that push and pull, that movement that you hope a knife will have, even when it's sitting still, essentially. And this knife really had it. It's a great, great looking shape. Um, loved it, just masterfully done. Uh, they showed two versions. There was a liner lock version, uh, and that had contoured handle scales. And they also showed a button lock version with flat handle scales. And they haven't quite decided which one uh, they're gonna release yet. I kinda hope they do both, but especially the button lock. I think it's gonna be really cool. All right, next up, Cold Steel. Um, some cool stuff. My favorite easily from them this year was the Competition Chopper. I love watching the Blade Sports guys. I'm friends with a few of them. Uh, I don't, get, I've never really done it. I've, I've been able to like run through a course one time, but it wasn't part of a competition. We were all just having fun at a, a friend's house uh, who, or his shop actually, who happens to be uh, run a Blade Sports certified course at the time. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, and there's not a lot of attainable options for a certified competition cutter that you can pick up off the shelf and go compete with if you're looking to try out the, uh, the subject. You know, if, if, you, if it weren't for something like this, and we don't have a final price yet, but it might be somewhere around $500, not cheap at all, but way better than $1,500, $1,000, dollars for a custom just to try out the thing and, and try to actually train at a thing. Really cool. It's got, this knife has a big old chunk of 3V, 10 inch blade. I think they said it was like eight millimeters thick. Uh, and a comfortable handle that has some shock absorption properties and a forward lanyard hole for that safe handling. So if you drop the knife, it just kind of stays there. I love this for uh, the blade sports folks. I love a competition style chopper for camp use. You got a big fro like chunk of 3V. You could baton with it, you could chop with it, split kindling, smash up firewood, clear camp if you need to, although a machete might be better depending on what kind of camp clearing you need to do. Just awesome, hands down, really cool. Uh, now Condor, I think the uh, the headline for them is definitely the Terrachetti, or I think the official name is actually Terrachetti Machete. Um, really cool, it's kind of taking what made the Pterosaur series so popular and successful with an injection molded handle and a low price and applying it to a machete. I think this was a, was either an 18 or a 20 inch machete, I think it was about an 18 inch machete. Uh, it's going to be 1075 probably. Yeah, it's the the pterosaur and the bush glider are 1095, but for the bigger machete, they're probably going to go at 1075. Do you remember what they mentioned, Thomas? You tell me, man. <laughs> you maybe should review the videos. I, I remember Joe being there. Joe was a, a nut and a hoot as always. Got to spend a lot of good time with him. Um, but some good stuff going on here that I I really like, and they're shooting for a price of about seventy dollars is is what Joe told me. And if they hit that. It's gonna be hard for me not to make this honestly my kind of go-to machete recommendation if you don't if you're willing to spend a little bit of money if you you, if you don't want to spend more than 30 bucks there's still some decent options but this is really cool it's got 18 inch blade kind of a spear point shape so the uh the bushcrafters out there which you know i sometimes count myself among them for sure you can do some drilling stuff with it making this kind of like a one tool option survival machete um, likewise, the grinds, it's a compound grind machete for ostensibly less than 70 bucks or about 70 bucks. 
convex geometry through most of the blade with a little section of Scandi grind back at the heel for your bushcrafting, your carving, wood carving and stuff especially. Injection molded handle, protruding tang at the back and an injection molded sheath as well that seemed really easy to use. It hits all kinds of really cool marks and that price should be really good. CRKT, we actually got to debut most of their lineup a week or so before uh, the SHOT Show started, uh, but they did save something for the show in particular. We could certainly count all of their, uh, their new lineup as, as a SHOT Show reveal, and uh, I would have no problem with that. But the big news is they're partnering with Hogue Knives to bring American-made manufacturing back into their knife lineup and they're doing a crossbar lock and they're calling it a crossbar lock. They didn't uh, give it a, a kind of a proprietary name, which I'm thrilled by. I love to see more companies doing that. And there's two designs by one by Matthew Lurch and one by MJ Lurch, his wife, both of them really good. But I think the Matthew design, the LCBK uh, stood a little bit uh, higher in my hand, felt a little better to me uh, in my hand. It's a Hogue made crossbar lock. So the action is great. Uh, blade's going to be 154 cm uh, price uh, i think they're shooting for about 215 uh, so not the necessarily the best value but really cool really really cool uh, to see them bringing us uh, manufacturing back and they picked a great partner to do it with and they've said they've got some other stuff in the works with them i hope that's true i hope they continue to work stuff or uh, work things work with things work on things with hogue together there we go nailed it <laughs> Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, Essie, next up in the alphabet. Uh, the USA made, or they're bringing the Libertariat back as a USA made knife now. It's like a competition chopper, it's a cool kind of camp profile. It's not as thick. It's going to be like an eighth inch thick blade, 1095. It's kind of like a, a cross between a cane machete and a meat cleaver. It's really cool. Uh, also, first US made. Uh, Essie that I know of that's not being made by Rowan Manufacturing, uh, who does great work, obviously. Uh, these are being made by Dobbs Defense, uh, but in hand, it feels exactly like a Rowan. I mentioned this in the video. If it didn't say Dobbs on the back, I would have assumed it was a Rowan because it feels exactly like you would expect there. And it still has the same lifetime, no questions asked warranty on it as well. All right, uh, Hogue and uh, HK technically together. Um, it was a Hogue, obviously, uh, if you're unaware, makes the uh, HK branded knives and they have a new entry for the HKs this year, the Ballista XL. Uh, they released the Ballista last year. Uh, it's an aluminum frame uh, with a shorter blade, well, shorter than the new XL, obviously. Push button automatic knives. Um, the XL has a crossbar lock Still auto though, not a manual. Um, really cool to see there as well. Uh, and new, uh, they're, they're calling the, this treatment a Chroma Cut G10. Uh, it's essentially layered G10 that has a couple different colors and they mill it away to get kind of a contrasting pattern. They're not the first folks to do it, but when we, when we see it done on a Hogue or HK, et cetera, it's gonna be called Chroma Cut from now on. Really cool knife um, and thank you for the, uh, the hospitality of the folks there at Hogue who gave me a few extra band-aids because I may have uh, may have bled on their booth just a little bit, but that's okay. Thanks, guys. Not my fault. No, it, was, it wasn't Thomas's fault at all. I, I can take, I have no one to blame but myself. Uh, maybe I'll blame Neil, Neil Hogue over there. No, it's, that's my fault. <laughs> uh, next up, Cancept. Uh, they had a, uh, a button lock flipper that was really nice. It is a smaller version of their Shikari knife. A little more EDC, EDC friendly than the uh, the original, and it's got great action, uh, exactly what you want from a button lock these days. But my favorite was not that knife. I really liked the Matto knife. I believe that's what it was called. Um, it's a front flipper, but I like it anyway, even though I'm not a front flipper person in general. Uh, it's gussied up a bit, but the design really is kind of this no nonsense shape. Uh, similar to the uh, Laconico designed Sakoke we were talking about earlier. It has no guard. It's just a, a kind of simplified essence of knife. It's a little bit girthier in the hand. It's got nothing in between uh, your hand and the blade to keep you from moving forward, but it's got that fine control, really cool drop point shape, kind of this deceptively simple handle that allows you to get the full use of that blade. 
I really liked it. It felt great. All right, uh, now we come to Lion Steel, and they had a new small fixed blade. He said it was a kind of a pocket fixed blade, but the sheath didn't really look like it had any kind of pocket uh, considerations other than you could just slip the whole thing in your pocket. Um, and the knife was called the Willy. Really cool. It seemed like a custom knife. It was so good. Small M390 blade, titanium uh, bolster, not bolster, what's the word I'm looking for? I'll get back to that. The handle is, you know, it's a hidden tang and it's got this really cool shape. Girthy, sexy, all kinds of lines going on and it just fits in the hand really nicely. And in between the handle and the blade, you've got a, a like a titanium ring essentially right there. Really cool, couple cool version, or a couple different handle materials. The ivory, I think it was ivory G10. Might have been ivory micarta now that I don't have the, uh, the video here in front of me. And it was just such a cool little shape. Should be arriving the first half of the year. It's really awesome, it's really awesome. All right, Microtech, the big news obviously is their new Ramlock. They showed uh, a new knife, the MSI, uh, as well as a Ramlock version of their stitch. And these are manuals, these are not automatic knives. Uh, it's kind of a cross between a crossbar lock and something like Spyderco's compression lock. Because you do have something crossing the tang of the blade to hold it, but rather than Omega Springs, it actually had a coil spring pushing this kind of module or, or cage Cage would be the, uh, if it were the Spyderco thing, but pushing this lock forward into the tang with that coil spring rather than a pair of Omega springs. Cool uh, thing, I'm happy to see they've already got two knives with it, so there'll probably be more. But the MSI, which stands for Microtech Standard Issue, you've got like a four inch blade, solid G10 handles, the ram lock, and they're shooting for a price of $250. And the one detail I haven't mentioned with that is the steel, M390 MK which is a variant of M390 that they partnered with Bowler to make. And kind of the two things I, I heard mentioned a few times were even better edge retention, and also it's formulated in a way that allows them to uh, ease their manufacturing, help them get the high polishes they like to get even better. So it looks better and holds an edge longer too. Pretty cool stuff. And for that kind of price, for that full size American made Microtech like that, it's a pretty big deal. All right, next MKM. I'm having sort of a crisis here because I am having a really hard time picking the absolute winner. They had two Magna Cut bladed knives, uh, fixed in a folder, both are really cool. Uh, first, the fixed blade, the TPF Defense, which is the Terzola Pocket Defense fixed blade. Just check my note there, stumbled on my note, sorry. Um, it's basically a pocket sized iteration of the Terzola CQB, which is made, originally had been made by uh, various companies apart from the custom as well. I mean, like Myrco, Camillus, Daryl Ralph designs. A number of the, the, that full size knife have been out there. Now we have one with about a three inch blade, magna cut steel, still nice hand filling grips. In fact, they feel more comfortable in the hand than most of those full size ones ever did. And a magnetic pocket sheath that, uh, that MKM does so well. Really, really cool. Um, the Eclipse folder is the other uh, knife they had. It's a Vox design, uh, titanium with overlays, and a Magna Cut drop point blade. And that blade especially spoke to me. I talked a little bit earlier about just that the masterful you know, rendition of lines when you're putting a shape together. And this blade, blade and handle, but the blade especially had it. It was just, you know, chef's kiss type of shape, really nice. Um, I don't know, I, I was gonna say that, I, I don't know which one's better. They're both excellent. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I have to give it to the, the Eclipse folder because it's a, a, a fresher design and, and the lines of that drop point are so good. But honestly, it's real, it's real hard to make a decision on that one. They're both excellent. All right, now we've got Ontario. Uh, the SPL series was certainly a big deal. Uh, orange G10 handles on a fixed blade with Magna Cut steel uh, and should be a, a fairly decent price for those two. Those are gonna be cool. Uh, but the S35 VN version of the Rat 1, I think is the, the real, like the special winner uh, for them this year. Um, it's the red Rat 1. It's the 
the old reliable, the trusty rat one that never complains, always gets the job done. Now it's got a premium stainless steel. Still has the full stainless steel liners, still has the nice full grip. You got red G10 now, which is the first time we've seen G10 on a non-assisted version of the rat. It's awesome. It's gonna be the same workhorse you know and love with more edge retention. Very, very cool. All right, Outlier Knife Company. Uh, they had one truly new knife uh, this year, the Lobergrud, which is uh, designed by Craig Caudill from the Nature Reliance School. Definitely has the, uh, the bona fides behind it there. And they said it was designed by a hunter. If I'd looked at it, I wouldn't have necessarily thought hunting knife, um, but this is you know essentially Caudill and uh, Outlier's take on a hunter. It's got a, a thinner blade than most of the, uh, the Outlier lineup, uh, which is cool, and a big full-size handle. It may appear even to be like mismatched, but there's a good reason for that especially you know hunting season if it's cold out that sort of thing or if you're so if you're wearing either warm gloves or work gloves you can still have full control over that blade and not have too much blade to get in the way when you're actually doing what it was designed to do beyond that it's going to be a great camp knife it's going to slice a, a little bit better than some of their designs um, but you're not going to be losing out uh, by using it in any kind of outdoor scenario nice little knife all right protec is next and they've uh, rebooted the PT Strider as the PT Plus. And in Dave's, uh, Dave Wattenberg's words, it was a, they essentially made it a pinch bigger um, to give you a little more grip and to make room for a, a larger pivot and button system. They're actually using uh, the pivot and spring from the, uh, the Godson, same size for a little bit of extra durability, extra strength, so to speak, and magnet cut steel winning formula all around uh gonna be a great edc shape not too big but you can still get a solid grip full grip on the knife and you got that awesome steel too all right qsp they had some cool stuff some of their kitchen knives uh were were especially cool come with, the, with some of the uh the cool handle materials and the uh the coppery damascus on one of them but i think the um kind of the highlight there they didn't have names on these, but it was the uh, QS147 and the 148. Um, basically take, or have a handle that reminded me a little bit of the Penguin, but they kind of took what made that knife good, added a button lock, and gave a clip point and a Tonto profile as options. Fit and finish is great. The button lock works great. Uh, I especially liked the, uh, the burlap handle with the Tonto blade. That one was really cool. Um, yeah, both of those turned out really good. If you have any naming suggestions for them, you should leave them below, but it'll be interesting to see uh, what they come up with as a name for those two knives. All right, Revo uh, had some, uh, some new Nesses, uh, both an automatic, which is gonna be really cool, uh, and a, uh, a manual version in denim micarta and Sandvik 14C28N steel. I really like that, that's gonna be cool. Um, but their uh, prototypes for the new Storm folder are probably gonna take the cake this year. Uh, we've got a couple of blade shapes, uh, wicked looking blades. They're gonna be in VG10 uh, with G10 handles and crossbar locks to boot. Uh, and it flips really well too, these are flippers. Um, it's a little bit harder, harder to do than you might expect to get a crossbar lock to flip well. And it's never gonna flip as well as like a, a tightly tuned uh, liner or frame lock knife will, but you can, still, uh, you can still do a decent job with it and they did I'd say more than a decent job with them. They're flipping great. They look awesome. They're gonna be awesome. All right, now we come to SOG. And although they showed this prototype last year, uh, they essentially held it back a year because they wanted to make sure they got some stuff right. They started to, to go down the process and they thought, yeah, there's a few things we need to tweak. So rather than just going forward with it, they still held, uh, held it back, which was cool. Uh, and that's the SOG 1.0. Aluminum handles and S35 VN blades, uh, both automatic and manual crossbar locking versions of the knife. And the white and gold especially, the auto, which is coming, I believe, as an automatic, is really, really good looking. Very nice. Definitely feels more premium than most SOG stuff you may be used to. Um, and the auto has the same kind of two-stage system we see from the uh, SOGTAC AU, which they debuted last year, two years ago, something, I can't remember for sure. Um, but you pull back on the crossbar and the blade will launch open. 
but you could also, when you close it, you could push the lock bar forward a little bit and that gives you an extra stage before it'll fire. So you, but it doesn't get in the way because you can still just grip, pull it all the way back, opens up, really cool. I should mention as well, this actually, uh, maybe I should have talked about when we were in the cold steel section, SOG has brought back their Spirit Spearhead, which is threaded, it has a handle, but you can unscrew that and it's threaded to take a standard, like I think it's a one inch uh, thread pattern, it's basically a standard painter's pull thread pattern. And in the Cold Steel video, Cold Steel has a version uh, of this as well. They're calling it something else and the blade shape's a little different. In the Cold Steel video, I was looking at it, it's like, man, this is such a cool thing. I can't believe no one's ever thought of it before. And as you folks in the comments so kindly reminded me, of course someone's done it before. Saga's done it before with the original version of their spirit. And you know what? I have no excuse. I just forgot about it. You think about a lot of knives. There are so many knives, you guys. But that's that was a, a, a gross oversight on my part. And I do apologize. Credit where credit's due. Sog had done it, and it's still a cool idea now. But the new thing they've done, they said, is they've added a, a new set screw. So if you don't have a threaded thing, That'll help you out. Apologies, SOG fans, myself among those. Uh, now we come to Spartan Blades. And without a doubt, the headline is that thing Curtis couldn't show us, the Magna Cut K-Bar. It's gonna be really cool, made by Spartan, two K-Bars specs. Uh, and it should be uh, fairly soon, we're hearing. Uh, they also had the uh, Harsey Design Silver Line fixed blades, which they debuted last year and are finally getting there, which are made by K-Bar 2 Spartan Specs. Both of those are uh, just about ready to ship, so we're, so we're told. Uh, very cool, those, those Harsey fixed blades, especially the handles are great. But I keep thinking about the little carnivore eating set that Spartan came out with, uh, designed uh, in conjunction with Mike Velikamp of uh, V Knives. And... It's basically a clever knife and fork set that fits together in a tiny case that's smaller than a smartphone. Uh, screw together G10 handles, you've got a knife and a fork. Uh, it's a narrow fork, but they've actually tapered the tine, so it's actually gonna work. It's not just like a big blocky, chunky tine. Um, fits into the case really nicely. You've also got two ceramic sharpening rods, and if you flip the case upside down, it's got a little section there that might almost look like the smartphone camera cluster, but you can pop the rods into there, it gives you a little V sharpener, a V honer on, with the ceramic rods, and you can even take the lid of the case, slot it in right beside it, and it becomes a hand guard. Super clever, I love this little thing. That's gonna be very, very cool. All right, getting to Spyderco now. Uh, some cool stuff, and we got to see a sneak peek of the, or we got to show you, I should say, a sneak peek of the Micro Jimbo. Really cool knife. It uh, hasn't officially been revealed yet, but it's a smaller knife. I'm trying to remember, we didn't take measurements. I didn't throw, throw a ruler on it to kind of see, but it looked about a three inch blade, full flat grind rather than a hollow grind. And I'm expecting uh, S30V, that's what the prototype had. Um, wire clip, really cool little thing. And for me, I'm not a fighter. Obviously uh, Michael Janish designed the whole Yojimbo series as a, a knife weapon essentially, but I'm not trained in knife combat. I'm not gonna be any better with that than I am with any other knife if I were, if I did have to do that. Um, but most people are gonna use this probably as a tool. That's the way I, I would use it. And I think it's gonna make a really interesting competitor, maybe something like the Cold Steel Tough Light, that small, sturdy utility knife. It can be really cool. Uh, I think it's gonna be really neat. Uh, next up, we come to Tops. Uh, their Woodcraft, they showed this to us last year. That's actually finally getting ready to ship. It is the official Marbles Woodcrafter, just, sorry, Marbles Woodcraft, just made in Topps' vocabulary, or Topps' design language. 1095, full tang, bolt-on scales, micarta. It's going to be really cool. Um, but I'm especially digging the El Pioneero, which names, or, uh, translates to the Pioneer. It's an Ed Calderon design. Uh, who was a, uh, a cop and uh, cop in Mexico fighting against the drug cartels. And this knife, the El Pionero, was based on a modified paring knife that he used in the line of duty, essentially. And it's a nice, narrow little thing. It was easy for him to conceal. Uh, and he made some modifications to that knife that carried through to the, uh, the official design of the El Pionero, especially the, like the 
very apparent thing you see right off the top of the bat is the cutout uh, at the back side of the handle right near the end. And that's essentially helped him index the knife when he was pulling it out. He could have the edge oriented exactly the way he wanted it to be because he could feel it under there. Simple little thing, but it actually felt really intentional and, and really nice on the actual fixed blade. And that one uh, should be should be shipping this year. A lot of the stuff Tops shows us. They uh, We love to see their prototypes, but those can be a little further out. But this knife, I believe, should be actually, uh, actually getting uh, released this year, which is very cool. All right, uh, getting near the end of the alphabet now, uh, Viper, their new volley knife. And I believe this was a Vox design as well. Magna cut on the flipper as well. A little bit of smaller knife. I think it was about a three inch blade. I'm trying to remember. But I really liked, in addition to the, the cool micarta and wood and carbon fiber handle options, they're doing a folder with SureTouch G10. You don't see SureTouch too often because especially now it's gotten quite a bit more expensive. And when you do see it, it's usually on a fixed blade because it really makes sense on a fixed blade. Essentially it is layers of G10 and layers of rubber stacked on top of each other. So you get a more rigid feel, but you get a little bit of grip from the uh, rubber that's exposed. It works especially well when the handle is contoured. So it, you see kind of the topography of the layers coming through, you get that extra grip. A little bit more uh, shock absorption. And I'm talking, you know, impact, not electricity here. Um, and they've put that material on this folder. Really cool. Uh, really nice design, even without it. But once you add that sure touch onto it, it just gets even cooler. All right. And finally, last but not least, we have We Knife Company. Uh, and my favorite from them, I think, was one of their prototypes as well. It was the uh, Rupture, designed with uh, tough knives in collaboration. And it's sort of a hybrid karambit style. It's a karambit-like handle, but it's a kind of broad drop point, almost a skinning type blade on it, quite honestly. Uh, but it's going to be easier to use for folks who don't want a recurve. If they want to use it, uh, you know, in addition to the, uh, obviously, the self-defense aspect, if you want it to be more useful as a cutting tool day to day, it's a little easier to use than a hawk bill, which most karambits, true karambits, would come with. It was really cool. Built super well. Uh, materials are still in flux because this was a prototype. It'll probably be S35 or M390 or maybe 20CV, one of those two, two grades. That's, that's cool. All right. Now we've gone through all of them. Now I have to answer that question that I couldn't answer folks there at the show who asked now that we've had a chance to look through everything. What was the best stuff? I'm going to do a fixed blade in a folder. Um, we'll start with the fixed blade. Um, there's two, the Terra Shetty from Condor and the camp or the competition chopper from cold steel. I loved both of those things. I love the, the Harsey design silver line fold, uh, fixed blades, but those, that was my pick for last year's video. So I can't pick that again. Um, I'm going to have to go. I love that competition chopper, but I'm going to have to go with the Terra Shetty for the best fixed blade from SHOT Show 2023. If they hit the value point or the price point that uh, they mentioned to us at the show, that thing is gonna be absolutely killer. Full featured, all the complexity or, or all the simplicity you want from a solid working machete, but with a little extra to push it to the next step. The compound grinds, the excellent easy to use sheath, the shape. Don't know what that was. <laughs> Somebody's running a cart upstairs. But everything about the Terra Shetty, I think, is, is a winner, especially if they hit that price point. Fantastic. And for folders, this one was kind of tough, too. Uh, it, mm, I got to go with the Microtech. The MSI, it may not be the, the first thing I would gravitate to blade shape-wise or anything else, but everything about it hit so many perfect marks. The new lock system, which is uh, patent pending for them, the new steel, the shape and size for that $250 price made in USA, well deserving of, of kind of the top headline for new knife reveals from the SHOT Show 2023. Really, really cool thing. Uh, I think they're gonna be hard to get your hands on for a little while. They're gonna be very popular. 
That's it. Let me know what your favorites were from the show too. If you've watched our SHOT Show videos, we'll leave a, a link somewhere here to the playlist of all of those. Uh, if you saw something else that I didn't mention here today, let me know what your favorite thing was. Just let me know what your, uh, your favorite thing was uh, in, in whatever way, shape or fashion you choose. Thanks for sticking around for all that cool SHOT Show coverage. It's because this, uh, it's because you folks kind of support this channel that we're able to go do stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. We get to bring you the cool knives as soon as we can get them to you, uh, talking about them anyway. And it's a lot of fun. I said that a few times, but it's just, it plain is, but it's tiring. So I think it's, it might be nap time now. No, we gotta get ready for Blade. Oh, we gotta get ready for Blade show. Excellent. Well, some of this stuff uh, is available now. I know at least when we're filming this, some of the Boker stuff is, uh, is trickling in. Uh, other stuff you can uh, is available for pre-order as well. But we'll leave a link to all the brands we mentioned down below in the description section below. That will take you over to knifecenter.com. And of course, don't forget about our Knife Rewards program. You don't have to sign up for anything extra. If you've got an account, you're in. All it means is when you spend your money on knives today, you get to earn some free money to spend on your next ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. See you next time. Mm -hmm.